Hi everyone, welcome to the weekend Q&A video. Now in this video, apart from answering your questions, I also keep you up to date with what I'm doing over the weekend. Now there are various ways you can ask me questions and I'll quickly run through them. The first way is you can tweet them at me, at Geekanoids and use the hashtag GeekQA. The second way is if you check in the video description, there's a link to my Patreon campaign. If you support me on Patreon, then you get various perks and one of them is priority when asking questions. I said priority, didn't I? How strange. Anyway, I will continue with the introduction to this weekend's video by telling you that there's also a way that you can click a donation link in the video description as well. That's not necessarily for questions. It's more for if you want a shout out for your YouTube channel or your business or your website, etc. So three different ways to get in touch with me. Take your pick. All your questions are welcome as always. And I'm going to kick things off with the first question which came in via Twitter. Now this one, I must say, this is a question from last week and I actually missed it. And it's from Adam Walker. So apologies, Adam, for missing your question. Do you know of the Sony QX10 and what is your opinion about it? Well, the Sony QX10 is a lens, for want of a better word, with a sensor built into it. There's also a QX100 as well, different model. And you connect this lens to your smartphone and then you can control the lens from the smartphone and take photos and videos. I've got mixed feelings about it. It looks very interesting. It means you can get different viewpoints, different perspectives on your photos. And they have been updating it as well. So kudos to Sony for issuing firmware updates to improve the performance of the QX10 and QX100. Would I buy one? Probably not. And I'll tell you why. It's because if I wanted to take a photo and frame it correctly, I wouldn't want the hassle of getting the lens out, connecting it to the smartphone, taking the photo, by which time you've probably missed the moment. I believe that you can take a photo without doing that, but then you haven't got the framing. You're gonna just be holding up a lens and then just snapping the photo. So I don't see the point in that either. So it's not for me, but I do see it as being a useful tool. If you want to be able to place the lens down somewhere else and then take that photo with your smartphone, brilliant, go for it. But you can do that with compact cameras as well. And then the compact camera's got the added flexibility of having a built-in screen or a viewfinder that you can use to frame your photos anyway. So then that negates the issue of having just the lens. So interesting product, but, but not for me personally. So next question is from Joseph Antonovic, house tour question mark. Uh, I have covered this in previous videos. I'll tell you again in this video. Uh, there are so many things, and I mean so many things that I share in videos. And I make so many videos every day, every week. You get lots and lots of content from me. And there are some things I want to keep private to myself. So house tour probably won't happen. Uh, so sorry to uh, disappoint anyone out there waiting for a house tour. Next one is from Techius. What is a good camera for starters in the photography field? Very difficult question to answer again. Uh, I don't want to be sounding sort of pedantic or argumentative in any way, but you need to qualify your question with exactly what you're looking to gain from the camera, what you're going to be using it for. You say photography. What style of photography? Are you Are looking for something compact? Are you looking for something that will grow with you as your experience of photography grows? Uh, what sort of budget, which is a really big deciding factor. If you want me to make one suggestion just based on a, a general what should I get as a starter camera, there are so many good compact cameras out there, but what I would be looking at is maybe a micro four thirds camera. So it's got a compact body, interchangeable lenses, so you can swap the lens out somewhere down the line if you find you want a different sort of lens and really nice sort of quality photos and nice sort of handling as well. It feels just a bit more substantial than a compact camera. So that would be what I would suggest without knowing any more sort of uh, qualifying details for that question. Uh, Alexandra Paranormal asks, I need two displays, $200 to $300 each. They need to be 1920 by 1200, good for video editing and have a tilt and swivel stand and DVI. Well, this is, a, again, a really difficult question to answer. Uh, you haven't specified display size, so that makes it difficult to, to make a suggestion for a specific model. Uh, and you've also said 1920 by 1200. 
and I would question whether you want that resolution. Is that resolution ideal for you, or would 1920 by 1080 be better, which is the uh, native resolution of full HD video? Making a general recommendation for you when I'm looking at sort of monitors as a whole, there are so many brands to choose from. I have used Iama monitors previously and they've got a fantastic range and a very good price point and the build quality seems to be more than acceptable on them. So I would check out the Iama range. Uh, Asus also makes some really nice monitors so do check those out as well. Uh, and just look at whether you really want that 1920 by 1200 resolution. I would sort of question that because the format ratio is going to be 1610 on that instead of 169. Now I've also had a lot of people asking me how I'm getting on with this, the Sony Xperia Z2. Now it's far too early to form a final opinion on this smartphone yet, but for the most part I'm really loving it. It's a super thin phone, very very well made, love the materials as well, sort of very minimal use of plastic. There is some plastic in the construction but it feels very very solid indeed. The display is really nice, great viewing angles on the display as well. In fact, I've got it a little bit bright at the moment. Let me just turn this brightness down just a tad. And there we go. So it's just a really nice experience so far. I've actually just been editing the video from yesterday where I used this to capture my daily video in full 4K resolution. It seemed to perform very well. On one of the longer segments I recorded, it did come up with a warning after I'd finished recording saying that it had got too hot and that it would suggest that I stopped recording video. It didn't actually stop recording automatically, it just said that to me when I pushed that stop button to stop the recording. But performance wise, it's been really good. Very, very pleased with how snappy it feels. Awesome camera on this as well. And so far, so good. Oh, and one other thing I should point out, let me just pick this up so you can get a closer look at this. If I show you the battery, now this is on a single charge so far and you can see there 77% battery left and that's not from today that is from yesterday so I used this all day yesterday for recording that 4k video plus testing it plus taking some photos plus playing with the user interface etc we're now at almost 11 o'clock the following day and it's still shown as 70, it's just changed to 76%. 76% battery life left. That is absolutely fantastic. Welcome to my Sunday. This is what I've been doing pretty much all morning. We've had a problem with this back wall for quite a long time. We've had the outside of the house repaired. So I've covered up this corner of the sofa and I'm repainting this wall and around the corner up to ceiling level. So that hopefully it looks a lot better. So that has been my Sunday so far, and in fact, it's about 2 p.m. in the afternoon, so it's taken up pretty much all of my morning. Then I stopped for some lunch, and then I carried on painting after lunch. And I've got to do another coat yet, but I've been watching some videos, well, not watching them, but listening to the audio of some videos. In fact, Chris Prillo and uh, Barnacle's Nerdgasm's uh, live stream, so I've had that on whilst I've been painting, so that's been rather entertaining to say the least, but I had to keep stopping at some stages to see what they were up to on the video. But anyway, the, the back wall there has actually been painted because we had some damp coming in from the outside and we've had the outside actually repaired now. So I'm hoping that that will have stopped the damp coming in and I've given it two coats of paint so far because I didn't want to start stripping wallpaper, that would mean moving furniture out. So I'm hoping that a third coat later on will make it look good enough. It's looking nice and white now. You can still see one stain though. But anyway, I hope you've all been having a fantastic Sunday. I'm gonna go back to some questions now, but please do stay tuned until the end of the video because I wanna to talk to you about some projects. That's all I'm gonna say at this stage. So here we go. First question for Sunday is from John Carroll Bugerin. I hope I got your name pronounced properly there. What made you start with these technology videos on YouTube? Well, I have answered this one before, but I don't expect you to have watched every single one of my videos. So here we go, this is how it sort of started. I was in the graphic design industry. I was known as sort of uh, uh, the Mac guy or Ask Dave came up a lot. You know, Dave, uh, Dave's the one you can trust if you want to go to if you need a technology answer or something about a computer or a mobile phone. When I was in that graphic design industry, there were sort of two sides to the business. 
and I was like the Mac guy, so I sort of was on the design side, and then all of the admin was done on Windows-based PCs. And I used to get called across to the other department as well to help out with that. But whenever anyone had a more personal question about a piece of technology, they would come to me. And I would love the fact they do that, and I'd give them an answer based on my opinion, or I'd research it for them and then come back to them with some suggestions. And then, throughout my graphic design career, I actually started sort of writing both for myself and for some other websites. Um, and I'm, I enjoyed that a lot. I enjoyed sort of testing the technology or writing about technology. But because I'd done graphic design for so long, when I was typing, I suffered from a lot of RSI related issues, uh, re repetitive strain injury. So it was quite uncomfortable to type for prolonged periods of time. And at the same time, I discovered YouTube. And I thought to myself, when I first started YouTube, wouldn't it be a lot better to be able to show somebody how a piece of technology works and give them my opinion about that piece of technology rather than write about it? So I could sort of visually demonstrate the product, uh, both the pros and the cons and what it looked like and that was how I sort of stumbled into YouTube and I made a few videos, they got lots of views. I was very happy with the response I got and what started off as a hobby soon turned into a real passion and a full-time career of mine. So that's sort of how it happened. I think that's how it happens to a lot of people actually. But And as they say, the rest is history because I've continued all these years and still thoroughly enjoy it. It's very, very enjoyable. So thank you very much for that question. The next one is from Pradeep Ayer. Hi Dave, I love your videos. Thank you very much, I really do appreciate that. What cleaning products do you use to clean your screen and body of your MacBook, iPhone and iPad? Well, I primarily use two different brands, but there are a lot of brands out there, but the main two I use are iClear, which I bought a bottle years and years and years ago, and that works extremely well, and also Muckoff, uh, which were really well known for making products that you could clean your bikes with, like a mountain bike. They do this spray that you can uh, spray on your bikes and then you wash it down and it gets all the muck off, uh, thus the name Muck Off. Uh, and they actually developed a, a range of technology products as well and I really do rate them. I actually reviewed them uh, probably about three, four years ago now and um, I, I like them so much that when I went to buy a new bottle of cleaner I bought the same brand so it must be good if I bought something with my own money. <laughs> I joke. No, it must be good. I ordered some on that. I think they did it on Amazon at the time and uh, I replaced the bottle that I'd had in for review with a, a big trigger shaped bottle and, and I just do my screens probably, I do my sort of smartphone tablet devices probably once every couple of weeks and then I do my monitors like the LED monitors or my Thunderbolt display. I do those roughly probably once a month and I use the same spray for doing my keyboards as well. So I just give it a light spray and then wipe it over and then polish it off, job done. So brilliant, brilliant questions. So I'm gonna keep the questions short this weekend purely because I've spent so much time doing decorating and I've got to spend the rest of my bank holiday weekend sort of finishing that. Uh, I'm trying to get the room prepared for some furniture delivery that's coming next week. I've already told you about a new uh, sort of media cabinet that I'm going to put all my consoles in, so I've got to get the room ready for that. And then in another area, I've also got a new storage cabinet coming, so I'm trying to organise all of my camera accessories into a better cabinet, because they're all over the place at the moment. Now, I mentioned to you that I wanted to talk to you about some projects. Now, when I've talked to you previously on video about uh, clients that I work for, commercial videos, I get a lot of questions about that and why I can't actually share that. So I want to tell you a bit more about that first. So I might make a demonstration video for a company and they use that for internal marketing. So you're never going to get to see it. Or they might use it on their Amazon product page. Or they may indeed upload it to their YouTube channel. But when I enter into a contract with a client, I agree not to divulge the details of the project. It's up to them to share it or give me permission to share it. That has happened on occasion. I've been able to share a few things with you before. Throughout that time, of doing projects, and it's been, what, about five years since I did my first commercial video, I've developed an even greater passion for videography and storytelling. In fact, I did a, a very short video, probably about three years ago, uh, which was entered into a sort of film festival competition, and that was received very well. I've also been spending a lot of time storytelling 
and developing a couple of stories or projects as I'm going to call them that I want to share with you guys and girls on video. Now the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I've put a couple of months into actually developing the ideas already and they're ready to start filming. So I'm going to be spending the next two or three months actually recording the first one. It might take a little bit less than that but I'm allowing myself the sort of three month period to complete it in and then I'm going to start work on the second one. And I wanted to ask your feedback whether you would like to see that perhaps on this YouTube channel uh, or whether you think I should serve it up on something like Vimeo perhaps which has got a lot less compression in the video format that they use. Something just flew across in front of me there. But anyway, I digress. Um, so that, that's the question. Just give me some feedback as to whether you'd like to see it here on the Geek Noise channel or whether you should think I should find a different way of sharing it with you. I really appreciate your feedback on it. I can't give you any inside information as to what the story for the first or second one is at this stage, but I will share with you some sort of behind the scenes uh, video footage as and when I start recording it. So you've got that to look forward to as well. So anyway, I'm keeping it short, as I said, because I've got a lot of painting to do this weekend. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed your weekend too. Hit that like button and I'll see you all again in the next one. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you'd like to watch another amazing video from me, please do click that top box. And if you want to subscribe to my geeky channel, click the red box on the bottom of your screen now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.